Buddy Dino Badala, my colleague on Sirius XM Radio on this on this very channel, uh, the the Progress Channel, uh, whose show is every night. Dean, give me r remind me of the exact times that you are on, please. It is 6 p.m. to 9 p.m. Eastern Time, but I'm moving to noon. No, I'm kidding. I'm not <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm As my heart comes out of my mouth. <laughs> right, no, 6 p.m. to 9 p.m. and Eastern Time, and it replays a different time. Of course, it's on demand. That's when I'm there. Bye. Cool. Okay. My yeah. And and Dean, you are a lawyer, and I you know yeah. I knew I remember when Congress passed the COVID-19 Consumer Protection Act. That was back in December of last year, and there was a couple of uh, actions that they took. I, I think against somebody who is peddling hydroxychloroquine or something like that, they, 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 they have gone after some, uh, some online hustlers around COVID-19, but you're taking this a whole big step forward. So, you know, first of all, right. if, I, if I got into that wrong, correct me and then tell us what you're up no. to. Right. I mean, what we're seeing is, and everyone has watched this happen, Fox News has made a business decision because they're a for-profit business. So they made a choice to sell misinformation to their viewers about the COVID vaccine. And we all know that, but Media Matters on Friday came out with a great report quantifying it. Between June 28th and July 11th, nearly 60% of their segments were designed to convince people not to get the vaccine. It ranged from literally Janine Pirro saying, they're coming to your door to find out if you're taking the vaccine, but then they're going to take your gun. Like literally saying that to, it's about your freedom, to making, trying to heighten fears about the vaccine or saying it was unnecessary, like Laura Ingram saying, touting natural immunity and the like. So it made me say, what more can I do than just write about this and talk about it on the show? So I did some research and I researched the COVID-19 Consumer Protection Act, which is under the auspices of the Federal Trade Commission. And I really believe as a lawyer, I had a good faith basis to file a complaint against them, which I'm going to encourage everyone else to file as well. It takes you three or four minutes because the COVID-19 Consumer Protection Act says that it is illegal to engage in, quote, deceptive act or practices in or affecting commerce associated with the treatment, cure, prevention, mitigation, or diagnosis of COVID-19. And the reason Fox News is engaged in commerce is that they sell a product. They sell information. And they sell it to people who pay for it because you subscribe to cable news. That's how you get. It's not free. So this is a consumer transaction. And to me, I really believe it fits within the spirit of this law, which is to protect consumers from people trying to profit off lying about the vaccine, about COVID, about the risk, peddling products that don't work. So I filed a complaint, and my hope was they open an investigation. So, Dean, I, I, I looked at your complaint, uh, or I, I, you know, I saw the article. Uh, right. I, I actually, I, follow, I followed a Twitter link of yours. Uh, and if you right. don't follow Dean on Twitter, you should do it. It's Dean Obadala uh, on Twitter, and, uh, and his re website is deanofradio.com. You can check that out and get links to that from that. And um, I got as far as, okay, and then I had to start the show, but, you know, okay, I can, I can fill out this <laughs> form uh, with the FTC as well. But I, I was uncomfortable simply copying and pasting your language. Is that something you would encourage or would you discourage? No, you, you can because it's everything I wrote. And if people and people have been emailing me, Dean at Dean of Radio dot com, D E A N at Dean of Radio dot com. And I'll send you the template that I which has the link where you can fill it out. Cool. The boxes you check right away. And there's the comment section. You can put your own language there. You can copy what I'll send you, parts of it, none of it, edit it around, change it around. But everything I write is based on facts. I mean, you know, Rudy Giuliani getting this bar, at least temporarily suspended is a wake-up call for lawyers and that you've got to, you can't make up facts. I'm using the real facts. I'm arguing to expand the law to include TV. It's up to the FTC if they want to do an investigation. I hope their new chair, Lena Khan, will take this seriously if enough people file an investigation. It's not going to shut Fox News down. It's not silencing Fox News. It's simply to stop deceptive information on the vaccine. They're going to lie about everything else. That's what they do. So be it. This is politics. We'll so fight it out. So but not about health misleading people. So uh, my attorney friend, <laughs> please, <laughs> please uh, give me the details here. The, the, the COVID protection, the, the COVID-19 Consumer Protection Act, does it require mm -hmm. that if any of us choose to respond to that law uh, that we have to go through the Federal Trade Commission or does it also empower Let's say, for example, that somebody in my family, thankfully this has not happened in my family, but right. somebody in my family 
was a, you know, a, a COVID denier or whatever, got sick and died, or got sick mm -hmm. and ended up with a $400,000 medical bill, um, could they sue or could I sue on their behalf um, anybody who was pitching COVID disinformation or, I mean, are there, are there, are, does this law provide for, for class action lawsuits? Does it, does, does it establish no. any kind of a baseline or, or threshold or system or whatever for going after uh, not just Fox News, but anybody else who's pitching this and, 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 and including politicians, although I, I realize that they have a lot of First Amendment protections. Um, uh, you know, how expansive is it? What, what are the parameters of how people can be fighting back using the law? Well, what you're doing is trying to get the FTC to do an investigation, to launch it first. Their powers are broad. They can get an injunction, which they did against someone who was marketing a false product to cure COVID. They can get civil penalties. If someone doesn't comply with the penalties or the injunction, they could imprison people. It's not, though, they're not going to act as your lawyer. If you have a personal wrong, if your family, God forbid, has suffered a loss because of lies from Fox News, you'd have to talk to a private attorney. A, as a lawyer, I'll say it's a hard case to make that one. This is different. This is protecting consumers in general. Their consumers are their viewers. They pay for the information by subscribing to cable news. And doctors, as I cite in my article, have said, their patients said, I won't get a vaccine because Fox News told me it's not safe. So you have this causation. So I think at the very least, the FTC should do an investigation. It does not provide a, it does not create a private cause of action for me to sue Fox News or others who lie about this. Mm -hmm. If you're selling a product, if it's for profit, if it's in commerce, then it's within the scope of the FTC mandate under this new expanded protection, which is only in effect during the emergency, which is still going on right now. We have an uptick in people getting sick, hospitalized, and dying. And literally last night, Tucker Carlson on his show ran a segment talking about how many people have died from the vaccine, not from the disease, but from the vaccine, again, intending there to scare people. There's no counterbalance. This is, this is night after night. They're doing it. And every now and then they say one positive thing and people applaud them. It's a business decision coming up from high at Fox, as it has to be. Yeah, it's got to come out of the Mur Murdoch family. Um, yeah. do, do you know of anybody who's organizing things like class action lawsuits, or is that just, you know, uh, out, out in outer space here? There were some lawsuits early on against Fox for telling people don't take the vaccines, not, not the vaccine, the disease seriously. Mm -hmm. Some of them were thrown out of court. That's a hard case to make when someone's on TV saying things like that. This is, to me, because we have this new law that just went into effect, it's protect consumers from false information surrounding the vaccine or the disease from people who are trying to profit from it. Yeah. It fits within the mandate of why I follow this complaint. Again, I hope people, if you want to email me, dean at deanofradio.com. I'll send you my one-page template. You can copy what you want, use what you want. If enough of us file, I hope it simply triggers an investigation that gets more press, and maybe it causes Fox News to say the lives of our viewers are more important than a little bit more profit. Yeah, amen. Or that this might hurt our profits. Deanofradio.com is the website. Dean Obadala on Twitter. Uh, Dean, and, of course, every night from 6 to 9 p.m. Eastern, uh, 3 to 6 p.m. Pacific on Sirius XM Progress, Channel 127. The great Dean Obadal.